Hi guys, I thought you might be interested to see this. Now, I made a video uh, on this before, but, um, but I didn't go into too much detail. Essentially what we've got here is a three and a half inch uh, Samsung floppy drive. It's actually a PC drive. Uh, the model, in case you wanted to know, is uh, Samsung SFD-321B, although pretty much any floppy drive would work. Um, we've also got a Grease Weasel version 4 interface, and that's connected, in this case, to a Raspberry Pi 4. You can see in the desk Pi case just here, uh, and that's connected via USB. The Grease Weasel is connected to the floppy drive using a, a crossed cable. And we've also got the uh, power cable running from the Grease Weasel to the floppy drive. You see the Grease Weasel is getting its power in this case via the USB cable. First thing we're going to do is create an image using Grease Weasel of an existing floppy disk. So here we have an original copy of Xenon 2 for the Amiga. And Xenon 2 for the Amiga comes as two three and a half inch double density so 880k floppy disks what we're going to do is attempt to copy or back up these disks using the grease weasel interface in the floppy drive okay so we're already in our grease weasel directory and we've got the grease weasel software installed obviously okay and we're going to run gw info and what that's showing us there is that we've got a Grease Weasel device connected to device slash dev slash TTY ACM0, which is the device that the uh, USB connection has come up as. It's running Host Tools version 0.31, which is as of today the current version. Uh, it's Grease Weasel version 4, and the firmware on the uh, device is version 0.30. And that's about all that we're interested in at this stage. What we're going to do is do a GW read. And we're going to give it this name of Xenon 2 1.adf and tell it to run. Now, I fully expect this to fail because. The, um, the Xenon 2 discs are copyright protected. Let's try to get rid of the space there, shall we? So as a standard format, standard ADF format, it won't be able to read it, and you can see it's given up on the first few tracks. So this would be unusable, but I'm just demonstrating the point. So we'll cancel that, there's no need for that to finish. So this time what we'll do is we'll do a read again. We'll tell it that we want to give it uh, three retries and three revolutions, just to make sure we capture all the information. And We'll call it again, Xenon 2-1, but this time we'll give it an SCP extension and we'll run that again. And what this is going to do is a, a raw flux read or a raw flux copy of the disk. Okay, so that seems to have completed successfully. We'll just do an LS and we can see there we've got Xenon 2 dash one dot scp about 38 megs give or take so now what we'll do is we'll eject that disk from the drive we're going to take a brand new blank high density floppy in this case but we don't want to write it to a high density disk we want to write it to an old density disk so in order to do that, we obviously have to fool the floppy drive into thinking that it's a double density. So I've placed some sellotape over the left hand hole on the disk in order to achieve that. Now I'm gonna pop that disk in the drive. The first thing we're going to do is just prep it for use with Grease Weasel uh, in case it had been formatted some other way from, from the factory. So the way to do that is just to say GW arrays without the space <laughs> okay and then we've got to write the image
Okay, there you go. Now it'll say no tracks verified, uh, reason verify unavailable. Um, the reason for that is because it's uh, it's an SCB file. So it can't actually interpret what's on that file. It just takes it one bit at a time effectively and writes it to, uh, to the disk. We'll find out whether it works in a second. So I'm going to reject that temporarily. And on this machine, which is a Raspberry Pi Model 4, 8 gigs of RAM, not that any of that matters too much. Uh, it's running Raspbian Buster 32 bit. And on top of that, we have Emmy Berry uh, version 4.1.6 currently, as we can see here. Now we'll just get rid of the uh, terminal window for now. We don't need that for a little while. Okay, so if we look at the configurations, there's a number of different configurations here. What we're going to do is load up the Amiga 500 configuration. Uh, and I'll walk you through the settings on here. So it's configured as uh, a 68,000, no FPU, 7 megahertz, bog standard A500, chipset OCS, chipset XRA 500, ROM, Kickstart 1.3, RAM, half a mega chip, half mega slow, floppy drives, DF0 and DF1 configured. Um, but DF0 we're going to be replacing with the Grease Weasel. No hard drives, go into expansions, come down to disk controllers, and you can see there we've got Grease Weasel enabled and replacing drive DF0. Nothing else in there is particularly relevant at this stage. So we're going to start that, bearing in mind there's no disk in the drive, so it's going to come up to the kickstart splash screen. There you go, prompting us to insert a disc. In this case, the disc that we've just created, we're going to insert into the drive. Now, this is a disc one of two. Um, so we'll use for the second disc, assuming it reads this successfully, I'll, I'll use one I prepared earlier, but this will prove the point at least. So we'll pop the disc in the drive. Okay, so as you can see, um, that's booted up fine on Zen M2. And when it prompts for it, I'll insert the other disc. Okay, now it's prompting me to insert the second disc. And here's one I prepared earlier using exactly the same process. So taking an SCP copy of the, uh, the original and then writing it back to uh, a newly prepared disc. In this case, again, high density disc, but with sellotape over the, uh, over the tab. So, uh, to kid the, uh, the drive into thinking that it's actually a double density disc. So we'll insert that now. Okay, and we've got the game. Right, not going to play it. It was literally just to uh, to prove the point. So, what we're going to do now is we're just going to come out of the emulator for a second. Okay, we'll eject that disc. And we'll go back into the emulator. I, I, in theory, I could have left it running, but sometimes it doesn't behave its, itself quite as well as it should, so just as a precaution. 
Okay, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up this configuration. So this is another A500 configured in basically the same way, but it's going to boot an ADF image of uh, Amiga OS 1.3 and it's going to assign DF1 in this case to the Grease Weasel. So I'll show you the settings quickly. The same as before, 68,000 CPU, no FPU, 7 megahertz. Chipset, OCS, uh, extra chipset, Amiga 500, A500. Kickstart 1.3, okay, half mega chip, half mega slow RAM. Uh, 128 megs of A4000, I don't think we need that. Let's just correct that quickly. Not that it would make much difference, but right, there you go, that's more like it. So if we look at the floppy drives here, you can see in DF0, we're using Amiga OS 1.3 workbench. And then if we go into our expansions and come down to disk controllers, you can see DF1, we've got the Grease Weasel assigned. Okay, and that's all that's relevant at this point. So we'll start that. That's going to boot us up into workbench 1.3. going to select that disk and try and initialize it. Okay, so that appears to have uh, successfully completed. And if we just open up the disk, we can see we've got the trash can there, but nothing else. So let's see if we can write something to it. So if we open up the workbench disk here, and we'll just go into say, utilities. Okay, that's fine. We'll see if we can drag a copy of say onto that disk. Okay, here we go. Hi, I am an Amiga 500. I am running Amiga Operating System 1.3. I have a real floppy drive using Grease Weasel version 4. Pretty cool. Okay, so there we go. And we'll just do one final test. So I'm going to get rid of that disc now. Something from my collection of old Amiga discs. So Jack Nicholson Golf. There you go. You can see that's an original disc. We're going to pop that in the drive and reset the Amiga using the same configuration. Accolade presents Jack Nicholas's greatest 18 holes of major championship golf. Okay, so there you go. Jack Nichols in golf working as booted on the uh, the actual real floppy drive connected via the Grease Whistle. So hopefully that was useful uh, and maybe uh, you'll want to give it a go yourself. So uh, I'll put all the details of, uh, of the kit that I've used in the description of the video. And uh, that's pretty much it. 
Okay, guys, catch you on the next one. Cheers for now.